Oh. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back. Welcome back to my beauty entertainment channel. My name is Amanda. If this is your first time here, absolutely. So hello, how are you guys? Hope you're doing well. Um, it has not been that long since I posted a video, so we're making improvements on that. Um, I have my hair in mini twist that I'm gonna take out um, tomorrow, but I was like, I need to film this video. I'm going to Atlanta um this weekend so i was like i need to film a video before i leave so you're gonna need my mini twists and they're cute so how have you guys been um how do i start this oh, here's my social media if you'd like to follow me on there twitter and instagram not so much active on instagram but on twitter definitely and you can check out some of my recent videos last month i posted a video talking about this like preteen teenage girl thing you guys are like keep fucking talking I'm sorry so you guys keep talking about um for some reason and i kind of went into um why i think you guys keep talking about it and if you really care about teenagers etc 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 so we have a new video today on an oldie but a goodie um so i i recently had the i'm gonna actually do my brows on camera it doesn't take as long anymore so there's no reason for me to do them off camera um i use the avh brow freeze or some just some brow gel to hold it up first but i've been i went back to the avh brow freeze because this is truly the best like brow wax gel thing on the market like they all try but this is truly the best one like look that that's just, I didn't mean, I didn't fill them in. That's literally I'm sorry. This is literally can you see? ABH brow freeze. Um anyways, oldie but a goodie. Um I realized recently, like I've been doing YouTube videos for a very long time. Um actually I I felt um I feel like college was last year, but it was not. It was three years ago when I graduated college. Um, so that's great information for me to know now. But in case you're not aware, um, I make a lot of Sims videos. I've made a lot of Sims videos, both playing The Sims and like just talking crap about The Sims. So we're here to do that again because it's my favorite thing to do. And so I think I'm titling this video like the downfall of The Sims 4. Let me first start off by before you go, before they come, before they come, um, that is a title of a YouTube video. In order to get engagement of a YouTube video, you want the title to include what you're talking about, but you also want it to grasp people's attention. So am I saying that this, I do think The Sims 4 is having a downfall, that's why it's in my title, but it also does not mean that I am sitting here and saying no one should ever play The Sims again. Because I know I'm gonna get that comment, I was just playing The Sims 10 minutes ago. Let's be clear. So my, um, what makes me equipped to talk about this topic? I've made a numerous of video on The Sims. I made videos like on The Sims expansion packs, on like some of the recent packs that have come out. Not so much recently, because I've been really, really busy. And I'm using this NYX brow pen, which is not new to me. I've used it in the past couple of videos, but I haven't used it on camera. It's okay, it's nice. I don't know, with brow pens, I'm really picky. I used to only use the Benefit one. Like I used to, I have literally three of them sitting right here. I used to only use this one. Um, but I saw that NYX came out with one and I'm like, hmm, let's see if this like $8 one. I don't think it's one of $8, but it's less expensive than the Benefit one. Back to my point. I'm not saying you need to stop playing The Sims. I will continue to play The Sims. I was just playing The Sims 10 minutes ago. I am using the tens of thousands of hours I've spent playing The Sims 4. That's my qualification to make this video. I am not a video game editor. I do not know how to make video games. I took a coding class and that was, once that shit got hard, I was over it. So I, I'm fully saying I do not know what goes into like the nuts and bolts of creating a video game. I am only speaking from the literal consumer side, okay? Is that clear? I hope that's clear. Thank you so much. I wanted to get those disclaimers out before I go into the video. So, The Sims 4, I wanted to make this video because um, the 4 Rent um, expansion pack came out at the end of last year, and I wanted to make this video because I'm like, so many things, There's the history of The Sims is actually quite complex, and The Sims 4 came out all the way in 2014, it's been 10 years, and it has been a fully packed 10 years of really, really high, some highs and some really deep lows. So I wanted to kind of go through it and kind of just like, I'm just to be clear, like we're just talking right now. And I, cause I think it's really fascinating to talk about like something like this that I know a little way too much about um, for absolutely no reason. So I'm just talking, okay? Just to be 
those disclaimers perfectly clear because I have been on the internet for a long time and I have a power where I can see comments before they come. So I'm addressing those comments at the very beginning so I don't have to throughout the video. All right, great. So we're first gonna start off by, I just wanna define these packs because I think this is where we start getting into the downfall of a Sims 4 nearly immediately is when we sit down and try to define these packs. So let's define an expansion pack. So I went on Sims 4 website themselves and I looked up how they described these packs. So they described an expansion pack as large packs that expand your game and take your Sim on a new adventure. So for every um, expansion pack besides seasons, definitely a world. The seasons need a world. They totally could have come up with some like very, they could have given us something with that, but it's not necessary. I don't, oh, this is why I don't do browse on camera. I don't like to talk as I shoot them. That's why I don't browse on camera. I'm not so talking, but I'm not thinking. I don't finish this now, that's what I was doing. That's why. I was like, why don't I do browse on camera? All right, back to my point. To either new career, new skill, new project, it's I want to add a new life to my game. And this expansion pack is going to add a new way to live in this simulation game. It's a little bit like less niche, like the expansion packs, like when you compare it to something like Jungle Adventure or Were Werewolves or Realm of Magic, it's not niche. It's very much, these are things that are either required like to play a simulation game property, properly, or here are some ideas that I think would expand the simulation game really, really well. Here's something you didn't have the opportunity to do, even with your imagination. Like even with your imagination, um, I don't know if you could have come up with like creating a celebrity on your own without like having the actual like. like I mean, it, you could just do whatever you want with your own imagination, but you can't imagine up cats and dogs, for example. You can't imagine them living in a city like San Machino is not comparable to a Willow Creek, for example, right? So most expansion packs from like looking at them, they usually typically jump off of a concrete idea. So like becoming a celebrity, living on an island, going to college, renting, which is barely one, but I'll let that go for right now. But there have been a couple expansion packs which have not been based off a like super concrete idea. And I wanna compare the two of them because one was released back in, I have, I made a um, timeline, it's over there. I made a prettier one which I'm gonna put in this video, but my raw one is over there in 2015 comparing to the one that just came out last year. So we have Get Together versus Growing Together. So in Get Together, you're not necessarily getting a single thing like, oh, now you can go to the beach. Oh, now you can become a celebrity. Okay, now you can see, see? This pack was like, okay, we already have made it a thing. You can have friends in the sim, but we're gonna upgrade it. So it becomes a much more structured thing. And I think growing Get Together is one of the best done packs in the Sims 4 history, because that group feature can be used every single time, at least I use it every single time I play, I use it. It makes all events, sleepovers, anything um, where you have people around, it makes it a lot more fluid. Now we compare that to, I think, growing together. I think they're very similar, um, which is kind of similar because you're not getting a concrete thing because infants were a base game, up, base game update. You're basically kind of upgrading the way you run your family. But in my opinion, it just, it like the, I compare the two because I'm like, look at what they were able to accomplish with a like non-concrete ID expansion pack back in 2015 versus what they were able to accomplish with a non-concrete ID expansion pack in 2023. I don't think it was done as well. It doesn't necessarily add a structured way to circumvent The Sims chaos. Like planning of to at least in the, me and maybe i'm different planning events like without i'm that pack came out in 2015 you couldn't do i felt like i couldn't do anything it was so difficult to actually plan events and have sims do the things stay together and like actually have the event run properly without the features that get together shown and I've said this for if you go back and watch my sims videos from like 2020 2021 when uh, people ask me like what pack um, what pack should I get um, when we are like starting with The Sims, when I'm starting with The Sims 4, I tell everybody to get get together because I, I think one, I think it's very slept on and it makes your gameplay, it makes the simulation part 
of this game so much more realistic and it makes it an easier game to play. An expansion pack should add something to your game, but also should it make your game exponentially difficult to actually play. Like, Growing Together I was very excited for, and I do, I like the expansion pack. I think it's a fair expansion pack. It takes something that already exists, family, the creation of families, and improves it slightly because they already kind of, I don't want to say shot themselves in the foot, but she already did a parenthood pack. Like before growing together, we were basing it off this family thing. You already added stuff in a parenthood pack. You already added stuff in a high school pack. And you kind of even added stuff in relation to Discover University that adds a little bit more dimension to the family. What can you really add in this pack? Because you've already spent four, three, four packs making stuff about families, right? They added a bunch of, again, I think it's a fair pack. I do own it. It added a bunch of new actions and like the baby carries that, that at least my Sims absolutely refuse to use. They absolutely refuse to keep the baby. I'm, I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to help you out. One of my Sims, I was just playing, she has four kids. I'm gonna help you out by having you do the chores in the house with the baby in the back carrier, but you refuse to have the baby in the back carrier. How now? I, I was trying to help you out, and she refused to take my help. I can't do anything about that, right? And you're able to have your parent like teach the baby more things, which is great. They recognize, hey, the sack of flour, infant, like that wasn't that wasn't working. They recognize that with creation of the infant, but that was a base game update. What makes this pack? What makes this pack special? Let's um, let's continue that in one pack. Let's do things. Let's have an idea, think it through, follow through, and release it in one pack. Let's upgrade all of the age stages in one pack. Let's add more to the family element. We can add more family activities. They did add a family reunion, and I think we could even add more family activities with like existing ev events as well, like the setup of those parties, set up a birthday party, set up a wedding anniversary party, set up a sleepover, surprise parties. Let's add to the vacation. We've had vacations for a very long time. Let's make a family vacation easier to execute. Let's have different family activities on these vacations. Let's have, let's go canoeing, let's go kayaking. Let's be able to teach our kids skills. Um, you can help your kids with homework, but that came with parenthood, I'm pretty sure. Helping your kids develop a skill, I think that could have been a really, uh, you can with certain things and like you're able to like read to your children, obviously. But I think if like something like that had been introduced in this pack, it would make a little bit more sense to me and make the non-concreteness of it all make me less concerned. Because again, Get Together did not have a super concrete idea either. It was just, let's make friendships better. But they exit, they made that they made the clubs, they made you able to make social groups and said, all right, we recognize that in our game, it is very difficult to execute a, 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 an event. Let's have these ways to circumvent it. Let's have these ways to call Sims to one place without needing to go through the whole rigmarole of creating an event. And get together, let's upgrade the family unit. My family unit feels the exact same pre-growing together and post-growing together. I just have new stuff. I just have new stuff. So it's like, is that not then a game pack? Is that not then a game pack? I don't know, I guess we'll never know. I also wanna try the House Labs Foundation. I am literally probably like seven months late. This has been sitting in this cart for several months. I just haven't used it because I don't go anywhere besides the hospital. Um, so I don't wear, and I personally don't wear makeup to the hospital, so I haven't been able to use it. I don't even know if this is gonna be my shades. I think I bought this in the summer and I'm really not, if it's too dark, I'm gonna have to use something else. Damn. Damn. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm gonna use it. That's a different shade. But I don't wanna mix anything with it because then I really won't be testing the thumbnail. It feels nice though. But I'm like, if I mix anything with it, it I won't be testing. It. Actually, it's not horrible. I'm gonna use it. We're gonna use it and we're gonna just highlight and conceal. Anyways, speaking of game packs, 
What's a game pack? So according to The Sims 4 themselves, a game pack is a medium-sized pack that adds new experiences to play with in new thematic ways. That is their exact definition from The Sims 4.com. So in the game world, we don't typically get a world. I think a little bit more recently with the, with the game packs that have come out. Again, we didn't have a game pack all 2023, but previously, um, the ones that were more recent, besides like the Dream Home Decorator, we got some sort of world with, but it's a lot smaller, usually like four lots or less. You still do get new career, new skills, new projects. I define it as I want to add a character type to my game. I want to add an interior designer to my game. I want to add a restaurant owner to my game. I want to add a magician to my, I want to add a werewolf. I want to add, et cetera, et cetera. This is where I think um, game packs are a little bit more niche than expansion packs. Like we have Star Wars, werewolves, Realm of Magic. The th this pack is just, the game pack is like, I need a little bit more, it's just a slightly more than just stuff, which a stuff pack will give you, obviously. You can't really like use your imagination to make a vampire. You can't just play vampires with stuff. That's why vampires is not a stuff pack. You kind of need something a little bit more. You can't just play vampires with build and buy and casmo. You need stuff. You don't need the game packs for your game to function and you don't need it to be a, you don't need this stuff to make it a realistic simulation game in the way that a lot of the expansion packs are needed to make it a realistic simulation game. This is just for fun. Like if you think this stuff is cool, but the thing is that's not always true because there's two sides to game packs. There's the dine out parenthood side where it's like, okay, I do think if you want to play a simulation game, having restaurants would be pretty important. And I do think in a game where you have families, have being a parent is important, right? But then you have the realm of magic, werewolves, vampire side. You don't necessarily, you don't need a spa, for example, to make your simulation game more realistic, but you do need a restaurant. And I think that's where like dine out as a game pack really stands out to me. I go personally, I go back and forth between putting parenthood in the same category as dine out because not everyone plays with families, but like family is a big thing in the sims that you can do and you also have a lot of other packs related to family like why would i tell a new simmer to get the parenthood pack when there's high school years discovery university and now growing together i don't know it actually looks really good it's dark if you can't tell <laughs> it's definitely dark um and there's none on this side of my face okay so parenthood's kind of in the middle to me and some game packs like Parenthood actually do get a follow through, um, but most generally do not. And I don't think it needs to necessarily be like, okay, game packs are only for niche things and expansion packs are only for expansion things. But this is, but I think like not knowing, not having like some sort of like determining factor definitely creates confusion for consumers and 100% I think creates confusion for the Sims team because that's how we ends up with the horses expansion pack that costs like $40 because that that is the literal definition of a game pack now you can play with horses that's not expanding your game that's not adding something that's like super necessary to your well I mean you did separate it from cats and dogs if it was including cats and dogs I could say oh animals might be necessary to your world but I don't think so I personally think game packs are honestly where the Hennessy is like it has the power to add like fun flirty flavors to your game like ooh, today I feel like playing a vampire like actually you know I want to I want to see I want to make like a secret a vampire living in San Machuno or a vampire living in Del Sol Valley who's you know terrorizing the town etc etc I want to do that one day right so I shouldn't need to spend $40 to just play a vampire but for some reason if you want to ride a horse now now they don't know what the what the game pack is no game packs came out in 2023 why not but you have two potential I, I think two potential options for a game horse and for rent on so we'll get to in a little bit more even with for rent like Okay, I bought it immediately because for me and the way I played my game, that was a pack that I needed or really wanted. I don't need video games with a pack that I really wanted, right? 
but like for rent how i think it could have been a game pack you can rent and now you have an ability to make more lots in your game than you did before because especially now that all the worlds have been getting smaller and smaller and smaller for rent adds a way for you to be able to create more lots with the existing lots in your game so that was another reason why i really wanted that pack hmm. why i personally really wanted that pack but okay it's a new thing new thing i can now rent what else new world the new world was nice but a lot of game packs give us worlds a lot of game packs gave us worlds and like for example my wedding stories that world is huge a lot of game packs give us really big worlds too actually so i don't even i don't think i think those two could have been game packs but that's besides the point and now let's define a stuff pack according to the sims it is a smaller pack that adds more to your Sims life with fun objects and fashion. And I think that's a very accurate description of what a stuff pack is. No world. I just want to add X thing to my game. This I call the Sims random, tra random train of thoughts. Um, Cause that's typically, that's what it seems like to me. A bunch of random trains of thought um, is what stuff packs are. I don't mind this category. I think they've honored this category pretty well. We didn't get a stuff. We get the, the paranormal stuff pack came out in 2021 and the next one didn't come out until last year in september so they also abandoned the stuff packs completely for those damn kits for those damn kits that i'll get to in a second but i think this category really serves its purpose and i think the sims team really understands the purpose of a stuff bag and I think they've stuck with it. What are hobbies that people may want to play with, but we don't necessarily have an entire pack to put them into currently. Like tiny homes are in during the pandemic, so we get tiny homes. Knitting is in during the pandemic, now we have knitting. You don't have to do laundry in the game, but if you want to, because you think it'll be more realistic, we have a pack just for you. Are you a big family person? Well, here's a couple packs to kind of expand the way you play with your family. Some more kids, you were sick of the kids stuff that's already there. Here's some more kids stuff. Here's some toddler stuff. Um, if you want to add a water park to world, you can for $10. You want to make pizza, you want to use a stand minute mixer, stuff that I guess theoretically could be in an, an expansion pack, but like that's not, a, that's not necessarily necessary to put in a pack like that. It's just things that certain simmers might want, certain simmers might not want, but it's not like functional things like a horse, for example. I think the Sims team has pretty much kept to like that um category and made sure that that category kind of stays what it is um i think it's really more so the game pack versus expansion pack like that line has been blurred less so more about stuff packs and then kits which i personally don't acknowledge as being real things that exist i don't according to the sims team a mini collection of content made to boost your play style with more choices and more way for you to play with life i don't know what that means I don't know. I don't know what that means. Um, things. I don't know what this, I'm not sure what this is. To me, it seems like boneless CC. I think that's what that is. Um, for this, I assume it doesn't take as long to make or as much like effort. Presumably, I don't know, as an expansion pack. So I would think with that, okay, you're releasing these kits, presumably full of stuff that was supposed to get into other packs but didn't, now you're selling it for $5. Now there's technically more, maybe maybe there's more time to think out like fully thought out completed packs. I guess not, I guess not because we are not getting fully thought out, completed, non glitchy packs. So what are the kits here for? Are the kits here to distract? Are the kits here to pacify? Because the reception, to, it's not even just me. Cause I know I'm a complainer when it comes to the Sims. And like, there are certain things that, but the thing is, I'm really not. There's certain things that I take, like I bought that for rent expansion pack at full price when I know damn well that should only be priced as a game pack but I bought it so I'm really not that much of a complainer I just complain I like to talk people don't like the kids in all of the like the tweets the Instagram posts when they announced like recently like two days ago they were like on Tuesday they were like we're gonna be announcing a trailer tomorrow and it was a trailer for a crystal kit and all the comments the comments were tearing them up and I'm like okay it's not just me like 
What are you even, what are you even coming to me with? Crystals? Crystals? We, you, really? That's what you're coming to me with? You want me to pay five dollars to be able to make crystals? What? And I guess, like, it is technically in the right category if you want to go there. Not everyone's going to want to play crystals. Here's some cool, like, crystal stuff if you want to, not necessarily your game, but it's like, are these really just here just to kind of like pacify us as we're waiting for something bigger to come out because that wasn't all but there because there's other ways to do that you can use the stuff pack you can use a game pack those take a little bit more time obviously i think but maybe instead of releasing i don't know seven kits in a row we could release one game pack i think that path like people just the same but i don't know that's just me so now I'm going to go into the timeline that I made. We're just kind of going to go through like what packs came out when, any trends that I see, any like um, recurrences that I see, and just kind of like look at it from like a big picture point of view. So looking at it right now, um, I'm not going to show you the raw. I made it on the whiteboard. That's what I when I first made it on. It is a mess. I made it nice and pretty and organized for us to look at. So. 2014 September when The Sims 4 came out, we did get pools in November, I believe, of that year. And then we enter 2015. So in 2015, we got two expansion packs, two game packs, and four stuff packs. Um, I'll go back and like talk about like this like um, necessary for gameplay a little bit later and what these like um, like this pink mark means. In 2016, we got um, one expansion pack, one game pack, and five stuff packs. It goes over here. We got City Living this year. 2017, we got one expansion pack, two game packs, three stuff packs. We got cats and dogs this year. 2018, we got two expansion packs, one game pack, and two stuff packs. We got both seasons and get famous this year. In 2019, we got two expansion packs, um, Island Living and University. This was a great year to be alive. Let me tell you right now, 2019, that was a great year to be a simmer. We got two game packs and we got one stuff pack. In 2020, we got um, two game, two expansion packs, one game pack and two stuff packs. In 2021, we got one expansion pack, two game packs, no stuff packs, and six kits. And I'm sure it was more kits than that, but I got sick of counting the kits. So I started some, I got, I started, I started guesstimating, honestly. We got Cottage Living this year. In 2022, we got one expansion pack, high school years, um, two game packs, and um, no stuff packs, and eight kits. And then in 2023, we got three expansion packs, no game packs, one stuff pack, and eight kits. Oh. There's eight, just one of these, two kits is wrong. Okay. So, let's look at our timeline and kind of discuss what we see. So, first of all, 2019, I think, was the best year for The Sims in general. Like, just look at this lineup. Island Living, you can't see what I'm pointing to. Ah, Amanda, use this laser thing. <laughs> I feel like a teacher. Oh my God, sorry. So, we have Island, oh my God, it's like I'm a teacher, I'm sorry. Island Living, and we got Discover University in the same year. Let's discuss, let's actually discuss the high I was on this year as a simmer. Like, when Discover University, I was a, junior in college yes junior in college right yeah yeah started my junior year excellent game excellent expansion pack excellent expansion pack i didn't play with none of these bitches but i'm sure they were great too so when i look at this when i look at expansion packs i pretty much categorize expansion packs into two categories necessary for gameplay and like just new creative idea. Not necessarily necessary for gameplay, but just new and cool. So I think the first expansion packs that came out were all things that were very necessary for gameplay. Like, um, I don't know, a job, having friends, a city, like having a pet, like having seasons fame not really this is when i think they just started creating like new i put it like half and half because i'm like i don't think it's necessary you don't need get famous in your game in order to exist unless you personally want to play with a celebrity storyline i don't think it's necessary and then once they got all the necessary things for gameplay out of the way then they started going into more like new ideas but they kind of went back 
because we had a bunch of new ideas. Get famous celebrities, living on an island, going to university, recycling galore, skiing, living on a farm. And then we get back into this. High school years. So you're taking something that already exists in the game. High school already exists in our game. Teenagers already exist in our game. And you're supposedly building upon and expanding stuff for teenagers in this game. I own High School Years. I've owned it since, I didn't buy it when it first came out because the game was fucking broken. So I did not buy it when it first came out. Um, and I played, I always have a teenager in my Sims house. So I always play with one. Are, is my teenager's lives that different? No. I do have an option of going to school with them and like, being more involved in their day. So that was one of my biggest, not complaints, but sort of like, eh, about like teenagers and in, in this game in general, teenagers. That's why I always, that's why I'm the biggest advocate for pre-teen. If you ever, ever watched a Sim video, there, I don't think there's a single video about the Sims that I've made where I did not discuss pre-teens. I'm about to do it right now. So yes, I can go so I was, I'm the type of person this pack was made for. I've been talking about how the teens are kind of boring. Like they, the only thing they can really do is like skills and a part-time job and like, yuck. But um, growing together didn't make having like, having friend groups, is, that's why I love growing together. Having friend groups is so much easier with that pack. But this to me, if we're going to base it off of what they're saying it is, like an expansion of the teen um, life stage, okay, let's expand like what you can do in high school, new after school activities, that is technically necessary for gameplay. But would I tell somebody to buy this pack right now? No, I would not. Because truthfully, in me and my game, I play, I always play teenagers. That's my um, knowledge base behind this. I always play teenagers in my game. My teens' lives are not that. Their furniture is a lot cuter, but my teens' bedrooms are a lot cuter and nicer, but their lives are not that different. We need more drama. And there is a little bit of drama now. We have prom. I finally was able to go to the prom. Um, my Sim won prom queen. She did beat some people up to get that, but she, you know, she still did win it. Um, She's a menace, but she's that girl. I wouldn't, I would say it falls into the category of necessary for gameplay, but it does not have the execution of a pack that is like truly necessary for gameplay, like these ones up here did. Honestly, truly. Um, and then we have Growing Together, which I think has very, very similar issues. Necessary, like yeah, families are necessary for gameplay. Having a family unit that operates well, doesn't have to be excellent, but operates fluidly. Of course it is a video game, so like it's not gonna be like real life, but at least like you can like work with. So I would, I put it in the category of necessary for gameplay, but it is not executed properly. It is not executed in a way that would make it truly fit into that necessary for gameplay category. And then we have Horse Ranch. I put both because I was like, well, pets, pets. But this one isn't really a pet because I don't think you can play like the horse. Um, I also, the thing is, I don't think you can play as the horse, which you could do in Sims 3. Me and pets, I don't necessarily want to play. This is me. I don't necessarily want to play as a pet in my game. Everyone's very different. I don't truly mind like not being able to play as the pet in my game. That's never really like bothered me or affected me, but I'm sure it really truly can for other people. So it really is just, a, just dependent on you and your gameplay. But I've already discussed, or I'm filming this part after I film the video, so I will at some point talk about my issues with the horse ranch pack if I haven't already. And then I also put for rent in the necessary for gameplay part because for what they're saying it is, you should like, everything should be a free game update. Like that's the comment that I'm gonna get when I say this, but I'm like, the creation of multiple lots on one lot apartments could have been a free game update it could have been it's not so we're living with it like it's not but that to me is necessary for gameplay that's necessary for gameplay being able to take not even just multi-generational just having like apartment buildings if you're going to keep giving us smaller and smaller worlds at least you could do so those are the expansion packs what else i, I talked about this a little bit but 
Game Pack 2022, and then none. None. We had Star Wars, and then Dream Home Decorator, which I love. I love Dream Home Decorator. Two, and then none, and still none. But somehow, growing together, Horse Ranch and Four Rent took the rocket ship to expansion pack. It's like they themselves forgot that game packs were a category that did exist, unfortunately. Now I wrote some, let's just go over the updates. Remember we didn't get toddlers until 2017. The game had been, oh, 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 oh. The game had been out for three years at that point. That's why I'm saying like, The Sims didn't just get ridiculous. <laughs> Like the Sims didn't just get ridiculous. It's just now our rose colored glasses of like, ooh, look at the pretty graphics has kind of subsided. That's why we're saying, oh, the Sims scene is now ridiculous. It's not now. Um, things just take a while, but okay, I digress. Um, toddlers came out here. We had infants come out here in 2023. Those are, and then pools, but that was pretty much like the big major updates. As far as like, themes go. I did say already how I think 2019 was one of the best years for The Sims 4. And <clears throat> I also wrote down that expansion packs, even though I say 2019 was one of the best years um, for The Sims, starting in 2019, a, many, many of the expansion packs, exception is Eco Lifestyle actually, most expansion packs started pulling from a previous idea. So for example, I we have city living, which is right here. City living is, okay, now I get to live in a city. Okay, now I get to live in X. That is an idea. So they took the, okay, now I get to live in X and made island living, snowy escape, and cottage living. They all, even I love island living. That is pulling from a previous umbrella. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. I just, something I wanted to bring up that there are expansion packs after 2019. A lot of them are not new ideas. A lot of them are pulling from previous umbrellas, which you need. We do, we did need island living. We did need, like that is necessary. But I just wanted to mention that for like creativity sake, just talking about the Sims teams. Like, I'm not saying like the Sims teams kind of creativity plateau is the word I will use. Eco lifestyle is really truly the exception to that, which is crazy for me to look at and like think about now. I bought it and it's in my game when I don't want it to be. I could turn it off. I know I very much know I can do that, but it doesn't bother me because I'm like, damn, that is a real expansion pack. That is a real like adequate expansion pack. That's crazy. Anyways, um, like growing together is pulling a growing zoom out growing together is pulling from parenthood is pulling from get together um for rent if we're using it they sold it as like a like i think for rent ties in with city living for rent even ties in with get together all the like family related packs because that's how they did sell the pack and that's how at least i play it you don't have to play it as like a multi-generational lot thing but you can and you do have that option and then Horse Ranch, of course, pulls directly from Pets, Cats and Dogs, which is over here. Um, Cottage Living, High School Years, pulls directly from like the get together, the parenthood, et cetera, et cetera. Like we had, High School Years came out in July and then the next year in March, we had a pack about family stuff again. And High School Years, I think could have been like such an opportunity to really make that teen life stage an actual life stage where you can do shit in because Mm, I used to say like, it, of course, like the baby, baby, the newborn to the most boring to deal with, not to deal with, but to have, to play as. Teens are boring. I would say as of right now, the children are getting a bit stale. We need some new skills for the, like I, like I was gonna say, I want a high school years pack for kids. That's not fair to like us as consumers, but we're already in this world of the Sims team splitting up packs into five, six, seven, 11 different categories. We're already here. Let's just exist where we are. I think children should be next. But the thing is, if you're going to give me a pack like that similar to high school years, then I don't want it because the teens are not where, of course, I do like how we now have acne, face watches. There's more like teen related things, but I'm like, things should be friend groups, drama, things like that, in my opinion, should be a little bit more like 
automatic. Like, I don't, I'm not saying right boring into the game. Maybe right, they did, they do a little bit. Like you're saying, you're gonna have bad days at school and stuff. There should be rumors flying around constantly. People should be coming up to your door. I wanna fight her. I'm messy, but that's me. I play a messy game. But my teens feel the exact same as they did pre high school, high school years. And that to me is a failed expansion pack. That to me is like, if it was a game pack, I'd be like, cool, I got I got cool stuff. I got new um, interactions. I got acne wash, face wash. I got, I got mood swings. I got all, but that's great. I don't need anything else because it was just a game pack. But you guys sold it to me as an expansion pack and my teens feel the, feel the same. Let me know if you also actively play with teens. Do your teens feel the same? It is cool maybe go to high school with them. Like I do like that, but it's also similar to how like get to work, like going with them does get old, but that is a new thing. So like, I, I understand. I understand like that does kind of bump it up from like game pack to expansion pack, but I still think I should feel like my teen sims feel different. So what do these marks mean? That's a great question. I kind of just put what I was, what I, it's what I was just talking about. The ones, this like salmon color, those are all like related packs in my opinion. And this tangerine color are all related packs in my opinion. And then I talked about a little bit before, like I just talked about how starting in 2019, they started pulling from old ideas. Um, I think university kind of was not pulling from an old idea. It was pulling from an old idea, i.e. Sims 3. It definitely was pulling from an old idea in that way. So yes, it was. Um, but a lot of these earlier ones were, but they were doing things a little bit different than the Sims 3 actually did. I think in 2020 is the start of the um, um, expansion pack slash game pack blur. The line before that, look at how concretely these lines were drawn. Go camping, spa, restaurants, vampires. This is a question mark. Parenthood is a complete question mark. Go to the jungle. I don't know what Strangerville is to this day. Realm of be a magician. Star Wars does still definitely fit into that category, just completely random. But we have snowy escape now, which if we look at the world, which we will in a second, the, the amount of the lot amount starts becoming a little bit more equivalent starting in 2020. And then we move to dream home decorator, which I do think meets the criteria of a game pack and cottage living. Again, we're blurring the line between how many, what is an expansion pack world and what is a game pack world and how are they different? They're starting to look very, very similar. And then as we keep going on high school years, let's look at the world again, we will in a second going together same issue for rent horse ranch same 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 issue um my favorite update uh, i think i like the infants i really like the infants they are a handful they are a actual handful like the infants in this game are an actual handful and i'm like this is a literal fictitious baby made of video game pixels and this is very difficult to take care of don't rush into parenthood um, but that's pretty much the timeline. Um, I had way too much fun making this. <laughs> I had way too much fun making this. And I'll take a picture of the raw one I made before I made this pretty one. But yeah, that's kind of like, I just wanted to just like spell it all out. Cause it's hard. You don't always remember when things came out and you don't remember what we used to have. <laughs> what we used to have, how good 2019 was for us, for example. Now that we've gone through the timeline a little bit, um, I want to go on to some of the like themes over general things that I see based on the timeline that I made. So when I was making it, I was trying to figure out, okay, when did things start to get like completely ridiculous? Because I don't think the, the Sims team has not always been regarded in this like ridiculous light that um, I at least view it in. I'm not gonna speak for everyone who plays the Sims. It hasn't always been like that. I think we've definitely had opportunities to be like, this is ridiculous. Like. We didn't have toddlers until two, two years after the game came out. We didn't have pools at first. Like we've had many opportunities to be like, this is ridiculous, but the game was so new and the graphics were so different from The Sims 3. We kind of were like, let's just take it because look how cool it is, even though we can do next to nothing right now. Look how cool it is, obviously. But now it's been 10 years. 
we know what things could be. We know the quality of the packs that came out back in 2016, 2017, and 2018. We compare that to the quality of the packs now. We compare the amount that you get, the price, the world, the amount of things you're able to do, how much it expands your game. So when do things, in my opinion, get ridiculous? In my opinion, Discover University and Eco Lifestyle, aha, were the last solid packs. Eco Lifestyle is actually a very solid pack, even though I tore it apart. I still do like calling it Garbage Island, and I do think it is Garbage Island. Like, that's what it is. It is a very solid pack for these reasons. It has a really large world um, and like a lot of lock in the world. It has like a message, I guess, about um, recycling and things like that and like saving the planet and everything. And there's a lot of things to do related to the eco stuff. And there's like new careers and new skills and everything. The reason I say like it is one of the most one of the the last solid pack is because eco lifestyle i recently bought it not recently last year i bought it when it went on sale that pack expands your game if you have eco lifestyle in your game and you haven't turned it off in whatever setting you're gonna know what's in your game whether you like it or not that is the definition of an expansion pack just like seasons you, if, unless you turn seasons off you're gonna have seasons in your game i get notifications about neighborhood action plans and foot which i ignore because I'm, i don't I'm, i only bought it for the furniture but that's how much that game that pack expands your game it's it, it's a part of your game no matter what no matter if you want to use it or not essentially but it's that it is that integral to your game and that's the definition of an expansion pack for me i personally think that honestly snowy escape and cottage living those twins I think that's when it started to get a bit ridiculous. And it, I, I, when I thought about it, I was like, oh my goodness, because I was excited for those packs. I was like, oh my OMG, we can go ski. I can have a farm if I want to, like super, super fun. But let's compare those two to Eco Lifestyle, which I actually tore apart. Um, the worlds are smaller significantly significantly smaller that's only that, that's when they start like um slowly like tapering us into accepting like way 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 smaller worlds than we've been getting for expansion packs was cottage living and snowy um snowy escape um new career kind of like kind of we do have new skills. The thing is with cottage living, like you can have a farm, but this is what farm means. Cow, chicken. Gardening, you could already do. It means cow and chicken. Yes, there are rabbits and foxes, which are you can't interact with, but that is their farm, is cow and chicken. Because again, you need to pay for horse lifestyle that you can't control. You need to pay for that if you want to pay for horses. Well, maybe you can use the pet, the cats and dogs expansion pack to kind of train them to do farm stuff. You're mistaken. And no, you can't do anything with horses because that's a different expansion pack. Um, snowy escape, so you can ski board and snow, ski board? Anyways, you can snowboard and ski and you can rock climb and stuff. But I also think climbing was in that fitness stuff pack, like wall climbing. This you can like raw dog the mountain. So it is slightly different. We have a new dining table, hot springs. How does that, ex now we can see. I think this is when they started, in my opinion, when the lines started to blur between a game pack and an expansion pack. Because what in what I just described truly expands your game? What of the two packs that I just described expand your, way, expand your game in the way that being able to live in a city did? Being able to like, structure makes friend groups structuralized to introduce celebrity and fame into our game to introduce recycling and eco whatever and conserve all of that into your game which one of, to introduce seasons into your game and of course like it's i think it's an idea 
their ideas, and it's a good idea, I think, being able to have a farm, being able to ski, like a country, like a countryside place, like a mountain place. But I think recognizing, okay, this is a really good idea, but how far can we take this? I think, and this is, again, my opinion, they take it further and further every time without like truly like fully fleshing it out. A farm in The Sims means chickens and cow. Because let's be clear, you could already garden. You didn't need, you don't need to buy an expansion pack to garden. Yes, you get a couple new plots, but that's it. Okay, put the pot on. Like you could have cottage, you could have um, cottage living and snowy escape in your game and completely forget that they exist. If you're not someone who um, plays in those worlds, you could definitely forget that they exist completely, except when it's time to take your family on vacation. But I thought vacations were game packs. Interesting. Interesting. So that's, in my opinion, when things started to go awry. And it was just because like, ooh, it's cool. Like, ooh, I can have a farm now. It's a really cute world. All the worlds are beautiful. The Sims 4 team, when it comes to graphics, they know exactly what they are doing. They know exactly what they are doing and they do it very, very, very well. But I just think cottage living and snowy escape were kind of like half-baked ideas and they were like no you know let's gamble let's take this half-baked idea and let's take it all the way to the expansion pack route um when we could have re re released a very 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 solid two game packs and then spent a little bit more time thinking of what expansion pack we wanted to release next next theme that i noticed um when i was making the timeline was the loss of the game pack so um game packs have become obsolete Obsolete. Werewolves was released in June of 2022. Since then, we've just gotten a fuck ton of expansion packs and kits. And we did get a stuff pack for the first time in a while um, last year. Let's go back to what I was talking about before about an expansion packs usually take like a concrete idea and expand upon that, while game packs don't necessarily have to expand that much because only a game pack, medium sized according to The Sims. And let's look at For Rent and Horse Ranch specifically. If For Rent, I want to ask the audience a question because I want to know like, is it just me who's thinking this way? Or is it like perhaps a collected thought on the simmers? If For Rent came out in 2017, 2017 is when we got like cats and dogs, 2018 is when we started getting seasons get famous. If For Rent came out in 2017, 2018, do you guys think it would have been an expansion pack? Because I do not, I furiously don't think so at whatsoever. I don't think so whatsoever because the main thing in that is here's a way to take the lots that already exist and make more of them. And you can be a landlord if you want to. And you can eavesdrop and you can break in and you can gossip um, if you want to. I don't think so. And I don't even want to get into the world because the world has like three open lots or some shit. Let me actually pull it up to make sure. Yeah, three empty lots and there's like four played lots. That's ridiculous to me. That's ridiculous to me and that is an expansion pack. Like the world, the world we just, speak, I think it started with Snow Escape and Cottage Living. That's when we started. They in there oh let's slowly taper them off okay it used to be eight lots five four three i don't think so in horse ranch i've already gotten into there is no reason uh, even the horse girls let me fight for y'all let me fight because i know you guys bought that pack and i i, I assume you probably like it because it's giving you something you really really wanted um but let me fight for y'all. Y'all should not have had to pay 40 some odd dollars for that. That is ridiculous. And then another theme that I noticed oof, from the timeline is these half-baked ideas. 
as we're seeing like slightly less thought out ideas taking up expansion pack slots, I think it's directly related to these kits. Instead of like taking an idea, taking an idea and like following it through, we can take a bunch of half thought out ideas and kind of go with it. Renting would be cool and we don't really need to do too, like renting is cool. And we have people like Amanda who really do, who really want to play multi-generational lots. So I'm going to buy it anyway. So we can just make our world tiny and we can just have our, the people who make our trailers work their movie magic and just show all the pretty colors and amazing um, scenes of the town and we can sell it. Horses are really, really cool. Let's call up our trailer editors again, who are literal musicians and just show horses doing next to nothing and write in tiny, tiny print at the bottom. Um, a lot of this will not be available in the game or whatever they say at the bottom, right? You know, the people with Simmers have been complaining about teens and wanting pre-teens and wanting like teens to just do more stuff. So let's expand of the, on the idea of high school and do stuff with that. But we're only gonna have like three after school activities. There'll only be three people in your high school at once. I understand like it takes, that's a lot of, that's a lot of things to do. You can't have, it can't be packed. The high school cannot be packed for like the game to function. I understand that, but four, Come on. And the world is gonna have four lots, but we also have Boba. But we also have Boba. Little Springfield Spangle. Like teenagers are cool. Oh, let's just make a pack about the rabbit hole that we send them to. And so now the similar the people who've been playing this game now can see what the rabbit hole is and can control them in the rabbit hole. And, and we'll just stop there. Yeah, they can like sneak out of their parents' house, but you could definitely make your sim do that without the game, without the expansion pack. We add in, now you can be a streamer, which is great. And Boba. And Boba. And that's the high school year's expansion pack, right? So now into like gameplay stuff. So in my opinion, where the team, where the Sims team has maintained a quality control level is in Kaz and Build By. The clothes are cute. Mostly the feminine attire is cute. I also don't care about the masculine attire either. So I'm not gonna blame them for that. I do think we could use more shoes, but I think they generally do a good job with this. Most packs come with a decent amount of clothes. And I think The Sims 4 really truly shines in build by. That's the reason why a lot of people are buying these nonsense, nonsense packs when they go on sale, because of the furniture. Decorating The Sims is literally half the fun. And there are many, many players who all they really do is like make a family decorate their house and leave. So you're definitely getting people buying your packs that we all say are ridiculous. But I think a good chunk of people are buying these packs for build by i personally bought eco lifestyle for build by and then through that i was able to see how detailed and well thought out that pack actually is i tore it apart that pack is actually very well thought out and actually meets the definition that the sims set for themselves as an expansion pack and if the idea the concrete idea is recycling and they made a full-fledged full thought out they followed through in every single way based off recycling, but couldn't, can't do that when it comes to teen stuff, family stuff, could not do that when it came to like snow, like snowy stuff and cottage stuff because those things, in my opinion, cannot go all the way through to become an expansion pack. That's why you keep it a game pack. Um, but I think The Sims really truly does shine the gameplay, really not the gameplay, the Kaz build by is where the Sims team, in my opinion, truly, truly, truly shines. Um, so now we're gonna get into the world and I'm just kind of just go through all the map to the world and just kind of like, just talk through it because, where's my blush? Oh, right here. Because the worlds, some are great, some are awful. Sometimes we see a trend, sometimes we don't. And let's actually go through and like see how many open lots we used to get and how much we get now. And we need another new crest. It's been five ever. When did new crest come out? 
when you actually look. I didn't look that up. It was very early, I think. Not even second very early. Do, 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 do. Game update in 2015. Incredibly early. And now it's been almost 10 years since then. And the packs are getting smaller. And we don't have a new new press. That's beside the point. So let's get into the worlds. All right, so now we're gonna go through the world of the game. So we're gonna kind of go in order, kind of in order of like how they came out. Um, and I'm not gonna spend. So Granite Falls, we all know her. I have not been to her in a significant period of time, but you know, cute. Magnolia Promenade, cute. Nah, this came with an expansion pack. That is really interesting how this world did come with an expansion pack, but this was um, the first expansion pack and they didn't really know what they were doing. That first expansion pack um, gave us the active careers, yes, and did give us the ability to like make stores and stuff and make big groups I do enjoy. Um, gave us a very pretty, pretty small lot. Then we had Get Together. Lindenberg, one of my favorite worlds ever. Look how fuck, look how massive, look how humongous this is. Look how many like home lots you have. Look how many business lots are already in the game. Look at the different sizes of, because one of the big things is all the lots being under like being 30 by 20. What is that doing for me? What community stuff am I supposed to put in here if every single lot is 30 by 20, right? Love, look, this is this is the standard. Windenburg, why you release this so early if you were gonna just ignore the standard you set for yourself? I didn't even make the Sims team set the Windenburg standard for itself. They did it all on its own. And Windenburg is also gorgeous. And then San Machuno, another all time fave of mine. Look how many lots we get. All of these have like three individual apartments in them. There's not that many like community lots, but they kind of made up for it by how many actual like residential lots you can, of course you can make anything of um, community lot if you want to, I know that. But the size, what I'm really here to discuss is the difference in size. I don't, Forgotten Hollow is Vampires, which I have not played. I'm thinking of maybe, not right now. I like, maybe I could, I play with Mermaid. That's my mythological creature that I play with because it came in a pack that I already own. I love playing with mermaids. So Forgotten Hollow, most game packs are not coming with a substantial world. Like, okay, five lots, not, not bad by any means because you kind of know what you're getting into when it comes to a game pack. Randleton Bay, again, look at the magnitude of, look at the size of this world. It is smaller than, it has less loss than Windenburg, you can tell from looking at it, but look at the size. The size, the versatility in lot size and space. Ugh, I'm getting angry looking at this. This is Salvadora, which is in the Jungle Adventure. This is actually pretty big for a game pack. This also has like a national park. I have not played with, I don't own Jungle Adventure. Haven't played with it. This is cute. Someone put a rental property here. Is that what that means? Yeah. Cute. Cute. It's a game pack. She's cute. Now we have Delso Valley. This is when I think the world, even I remember when this, when this like map first came out, people were like, so where's the rest of it? Because this is when, so you have a very small town. You have three lots here and you have three lots up here. There's one singular empty lot. This is when they started to, um, I guess this is when they actually first started to kind of like um, taper us into accepting smaller and smaller lot worlds for expansion packs. Because this, looking at this, this was actually ridiculous. It was sort of a, in my opinion, a less, I don't want to say less serious expansion pack because that's not right because it's a celebrity, but I'm like, it's a, it's a celebrity. You don't need a celebrity to play in it. So I took the pack a little bit less seriously, if that makes sense. But it still doesn't justify having two empty lots and having, look how bare bones this place is, for example. Then they, I think they redeemed themselves slightly. Sulani is another one of my most played. I always, I do residential stuff here and I do, I make most of these are um, like rental, like vacation stuff as well. I do think in terms of like amount of lots, it is, I don't even, is it more than this? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. This one has slightly more. 
and I think it's stunning. I think the beauty of Sawani sold any like real issues that that uh, pack had, like, I, cause it's just so pretty. That's the thing with The Sims team. They know how much I can get away with by making shit absolutely objectively beautiful. And I, I don't think Island Living has major issues in the next expansion pack, but if you definitely compare it to what we got um, in the Island pack in The Sims 3, it's far less, but it is so stunning. It is three times, it is 15 times more stunning. And the world reflects that. Now we have Strangerville again. I don't know what this, I still don't know what this is. I, I still don't know what this is. <laughs> but that, that, she's here, yay! Then we have Glimmerbrook, which is the Realm of Magic. Again, very standard game pack lot, five lots, very standard game pack. Then we have Britchester on University. I've actually only played in this dorm. I haven't played in this dorm over here. I've only played in this one once and I was over it. <laughs> After playing with that one sim, that game I played on, on YouTube, I was like, I'm done with this big world has a lot of like things to do i do think like uh, of course we can't change anything now an empty like just additional like community lot would have been helpful but i think in my game i knocked one of these like um home lots and put like another like bar library type thing here but i think britchester is a very solid i think it's a very solid world look at the amount of lots now of course like you can't do anything with like these you want to keep some of these in here but look at the amount of lots Keep that in mind. Now we're in Evergreen Harbor, which, oh, it's actually, because I haven't gone into the world, I literally only use the furniture. It is kind of small. I know one of these is apartments. Maybe. Is this one the apartments? One of these is apartments, that I know. It's pretty small, actually, looking at it now. Evergreen Harbor, Eco Lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's small. See? Then we go into Snowy Escape, which is objectively small. It's actually one, two, six, seven, eleven, technically, or maybe tw actually twelve. So Snowy Escape is not that small. Now that I think when I play it, it appears smaller than it is. Snowy Escape is not the small one. I think it's this one. That's the small one. Yeah. Well. This one's actually pretty big. It's actually Evergreen Harbor is a lot smaller than I thought. Um, and Snowy Escape and Cottage Living are a little bit larger than I thought. But even with this, like, I think for me it was kind of like the size. I've never used this as the nightclub that it was originally meant to be played at. I think I switched it out for something else. You know, every time I play Snowy Escape, I switch it out for something else. I don't ever use the lounge. So I feel like if my sims can't do anything in these lounges, I know they can, but I feel like they can't. I, I feel like they can't. But this is actually a lot bigger than I remember it being, and so is Cottage Living. But I think in the video I was talking about how I think that's when they started to have us um, get more used to smaller lots, smaller worlds for expansion packs. But I think I actually, my point that I wanted to want to make is I think in not so much the world, but what you get is a lot less than what it had been in previous. The lots are actually a pretty standard, the world, sorry, are a pretty standard size. But I think the, um, what we could do in these packs was significantly less. And they were still placating us with a normal size world. And then we have Tartosa, which is large for a game pack. I got this pack um, one because I thought it was stunning, absolutely stunning. And because I needed, I was getting bored of all the world I was playing with. And when I was looking at what game pack to get, I wanted a world that was a little bit bigger. And this world is really big. This world is actually humongous and it's stunning and it's so pretty and I love playing it in it. I make all of these little vacation homes. We have honeymoons, we have excursions. I love, I love this world. And it's really large for a game pack. And then what is this one? Werewolves? Yes. Okay. This is a standard a standard game pack size world. I wonder what made them go crazy with Chartosa. Do you guys think this was supposed to be like a world for an expansion pack that they abandoned? Like this is huge. Like every other game pack world we've looked at has been five lots max. And this one is huge. I'm not complaining, but I'm just curious. 
And then over here we have San Sequoia, which came with uh, growing together. Right, and then Copperdale came with high school years. This one, it's, I don't play in this world ever. I don't think I've played one singular family. I don't even think I've even opened this world. I don't travel to this world. I know this new like community, not to park. Somewhere in here, there's like a, there's like that new type of lot. I haven't played with that that much either. I don't come here because what am I going to do here? This is very, to me, very residential. And it is nice. I guess I could just like tear it all down and put new families in here. But I'm like, I already have like worlds I like a little bit better to do that with. This is a pretty sizable world. A pretty sizable world. I do see most are 30 by 20. We do have a couple bigger ones. We can put like bigger, like more community stuff there. Um, but this world is just very meh to me and usually the sims team is like exceptional with like their world and world building the way the world looks this to me was very a um, very meh a very meh attempt at a world okay was that the last one here so where's copperdale did i literally forget copperdale i'm so sorry um i will go back and do that in one second um so we have chestnut ridge which is the horse ranch place I don't know, horse curls, you guys tell me what you think about this one. Is this adequate for you? These lots, they look big enough to have like a horse, maybe not that one, but these look big enough to have like a horse in your backyard. Horse girls, let me know. Let me know how you, what you guys think, because I'll we'll, I'll take it from there. Let me know what you guys think about this. And then this is our newest one. Hello? Tomarang. I also like look at, this is an expansion pack. This is shit I'm talking, look, look, this is an expansion pack. One, two, three, empty lots. One, two, three, four. And then what is this? What is this? This is an expansion pack. For rent, I really think was a play right in our face. Okay, you can rent stuff now. You can rent lots, more lots, and we're gonna give you no lots because, hey guys, why would, we, well, why would we give you more actual lots? We just showed you, you just bought a way to create more lots in a lot that already exists. That's their excuse. No, honey, we've been playing The Sims for 10 years. We've played in all the lots. We want more new spaces to take our Sims. Let me get Copperdale on here, uh, real quick. Um, hold, please. Copperdale is a not a good world either. I haven't even been to that boba shop actually because I'm just like mm, maybe I'll go I have a I'm playing a family right now so maybe I'll have their team just you know take a quick little trip over see what's over there and you kind of there's just one it's just a place where my team seems to go but they still have no personalities it's so interesting this is Copperdale I it's a no, I have, I finally went, okay, let me put my laser point. I finally went over here. I do like this area, this little amusement park area. I went, because I went to the prom, finally. I went to the prom and we went, this was the, where the after party was, but it was blizzarding. So Amanda did not stay. Um, it's, is this the one that was an old fishing town? I think that was this one. It's just, It's just, hmm? of course, like not every world can be like super beautiful. Like, um, what was that one called? This one? Or Tartosa or Tomarang that gave us no lots. It's just very meh to me. I um, immediately switched out my high school as I'm sure most people did because the high school that was there was not my favorite thing to look at. This world is very meh. You're giving us one empty lot to do whatever with. Like, are you, like, I feel like you're giving me one empty lot to do. Of course you can do whatever you want with these lots. One empty lot to work, work with. Do you want, do you even want me to move in here? That's what, that's what that gives to me, honestly. And I could be dead wrong. I probably am dead wrong. That's what this gives to me. It gives very like, mm, here, take it here, Dan. It, it's giving, you don't want me to live here. And I don't, I'm not gonna move my Sims family into Copperdale. We went to go visit one of my um, teen Sims girlfriends who lives, who's like, the, who's day, um, she's dating the daughter of the Prince. Well, I didn't know, I did not know that. I went over, that's why I finally saw this world and I was like, 
I'm totally good. It's very dreary. And I'm sure I could I could definitely create a whole plot line and storyline with that. But my issue with the world is really just like one one singular lot, and there's not a lot of change like um differences in size and all of these lots it's just not a very like appealing lot for me to play with but of course i'm very different everyone plays the sims differently san sequoia is just i don't know it's just so meh to me it's just so meh this is entire all this most interesting part is completely unplayable like the most interesting part right here we can't play with this is the world that i think had a lot of people like there was a lot of things that you could not interact with in this world that they put in the trailer that you can't interact so i, I was like let me not even bother let me not even bother let me leave y'all to it and y'all can go and have fun and i love this for you guys so those are the worlds i do think i do think um like actually looking at how many lots it is a pretty pretty equivalent distribution when it comes to expansion packs but especially when it comes to snow escape and cottage living i was a little bit wrong there i think it's more so about they didn't give us enough gameplay to make that qualify as an expansion pack but i do think we're getting more into gorgeous like this is the most recent we're getting more into and i'm sure none of this is playable none we're getting more into gorgeous gowns, which the Sims team is very, very good at making things gorgeous. Believe me, they are amazing at making things gorgeous. I just want some substance. I want some substance in my game and I want some substance in my Sims. So that's kind of my wish, honestly. But yeah, those are the worlds. Um, it's actually really cool to look at because now I'm like, maybe let me try my let me try maybe move my family i don't do you guys move your best this is just a question i want to know do you guys move your sims like when you have them live in one place do you how often do you move your sims i don't typically ever move my sims and if i do it's like they're moving for college like they're moving out of their parents house i never maybe i should get into that so i can see a little bit more of these worlds um so i really only i see the world um when i go to them obviously for like events and stuff but you get to see a little bit more of the world when you actually live in it so how often do you guys move your sims like i don't know move household i rarely use that feature you guys should get into it but yeah those are worlds all right and so now about gameplay let's actually talk about the gameplay and hmm, how it relates to the downfall of the sims 4 glitch the biggest thing that I have been seeing as a um, simmer who's been playing this game since the demo, since the demo that came out. I want to say quality control, but I don't believe the Sims team is hiring people who are not good at this job. That's my thing. I don't think the Simmers are hiring people who are bad at designing. I don't think so. I think that in my, I don't know, but it doesn't make that doesn't make any sense to me. The Sims 3 despite it looking the way it looked, ran very, very, very well. The Sims 4 at the start ran very, very well, besides dying out, which has been the ugly stepchild in this glitch epidemic. Why release things that aren't ready? Why have the past couple expansion packs caused such chaos? People need to repair their game. You need to release an update three days later because it's broken everybody's game. Why has that happened consistently for the past couple of releases? Why release something that is not ready? And please, please correct me if I'm wrong because I can be totally wrong. I do not think that simmers are like banging down the doors of the sims 4 and demanding expansion packs every six months in 2023 we got growing together in march the horse one in july and rent in december i don't think the sims team is banging down the doors of the sims 4 demanding expansion packs that frequently people do want stuff but i don't know about y'all i would rather wait the three months i'd rather wait the six months even and get something that i can and play with the day of and won't fucking destroy my game why not just hold off and that goes back to what i was saying before i don't believe the sims team has incompetent fools on their team like i don't think so the people that um talk about the game and about the game they seem very knowledgeable in the sims they've been playing it for a long time i'm like are there certain deadlines that they're having y'all meet that you like physically cannot meet like are they rushing the process because honestly 
that's what it's giving. It's giving they're rushing the process. Ooh, the oldie but a goodie, Mac Chestnut. Are they rushing the process? Like, if so, I am so sorry because it's getting a bit ridiculous. We used to get like one, maybe two expansion packs a year, three in 2023. I was like, oh, wow. That's real different. We can even like, look at how frequently they come out. And correct me if I'm wrong related to like glitchy stuff. I don't remember The Sims having very, very, very serious like buggy issues back at the beginning. I know definitely Dine Out was a superstar in that, but they, if I remember correctly, that was the only pack. I'm using the uh, one, of, this is not new, but it was new to me, the new the Fenty Gloss in the shade Champ Stamp Fantasy. I just was in Sephora and I was like, oh, I didn't know that shade came out and it's gorgeous. So I'm using it. But the only one that I remember is Dine Out. And now we are in like some sort of like battle of spice with the Sims 4 team about fixing that damn pack. You allegedly fix Spa Day. I say allegedly only because I don't play in the spa. Actually, I was just in a spa um, with my Sim. I don't know what they fixed, but it took forever for my Sim to even get sat it's I'm gonna come over for her manicure. It took me, I had to, I had to like um, keep clicking like five different times. I don't know if that's what they fixed. I'm gonna fix something else. I don't really know. I don't play spas that often, um, except when I need it for a storyline. Those are my kittens. Um, but that, I don't remember this. I don't remember, and I'm like, is this, is this like a, like an animation thing? Like how they're working animators in Hollywood to the bone. Cause that's what it's giving to me. Honestly, that I don't know if that's true. I don't, I don't know if that's true, but I'm just like to go from releasing like one a year, then you kick it up to two and then you bring it back, 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 back down to one, but you start releasing packs like every six business days. And now you have three in the last year. Like what's really, and they're not, and they're not playable. High school years when it first came out was literally not playable. Why are we, why? There is no reason for this, unless there is a reason that we don't, why are you releasing things that are unplayable? There's no reason for that. Take the time necessary to think of, th to think of the pack that you want, to develop pack that you want. Let me look, actually, Eco Lifestyle was, the, was released in June. And there's another pack release in November. Cause I'm just like, why? <laughs> why so frequently if they're not going to work? Why not take the extra however long? Again, I don't make video games for a living, so I don't know how long. Take however long and sit down and think of something different and like work through the errors. Of course your game, people are gonna look at your game in a different light. If every single time they've had to go play it, it doesn't fucking work. Every new pack that they buy, buy, it doesn't work. That is going to create a quote unquote downfall of your overall game. So maybe fix those things. Like maybe before we like come up with new ideas, we go back to our old ones and see if they're actually operational and functional. Cause I'm like, if you like, you have the latest, the last live stream I watched, I think was before Rent. The person themselves was like, oh, this, this is a glitch that is always, that seems to be happening a lot. In your own game live stream that is supposed to be selling me this expansion pack, there are glitches. There are bad glitches. This is your like marketing tool you're using to sell me a game and it's not working it's not working at your site. At your site, you're the creator of this game. It's not working, but you want me to buy it. I did, but you want me to buy it. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. I'm just very confused. And so next category that I wanna discuss is like listening to player feedback, which I think this, I don't wanna give them credit for this, Truthfully, honestly, because it's, to me, it's very like bare minimum behavior. You're a simulation video game. Your simulation video game should reflect the current population of the world. 
I don't think that's too much to ask. They acted like it was too much to ask for the past 10 years. The Sims 4, um, if you like, if you started playing during the, during the pandemic, The Sims 4 has had major issues with diversity since the existence of the game. The skin tones when the game first came out were horrifying at best horrifying at best. There were not nearly as many skin tones. Forget about undertones. Forget about undertones. It was a genuine travesty. So they fixed that, which is the very least they could do. The hairstyle options for Black people specifically were, you had two options. Look at me, look me in my eye. Jumbo box braids and Afro. That was it. If you wanted to see like some sort of textured hair, that was it. Kids, Forget about it. Hair, black hairstyles for children, forget about it. They fixed that, the least they could do, the least they could do. Forget about a bonnet, forget about a hijab, forget about a do-rag, forget about all of that. That was forgotten about, forgotten about until recently. That is all rectified now, the least they could do. We, The Sims for a very long time did not have any way to make your Sim um, have like accessibility devices. Now we have hearing aids. We have things like birthmark scars. Now recently we have vitiligo. Um, we don't have uh, mobility aids. I don't know if that's something that they're like trying to do, but I hope that comes in some sort of like free update because a health expansion pack would be a bit ridiculous to me, but okay, that'd be a bit ridiculous to me. Like even more ridiculous in the past couple of stuff. And they've made improvements. Um, it's been 10 years and these improvements have all pretty much been made in the past two, three years. Um, so because the CC creators were absolutely molly whopping them in this department. And they had to call them up to help in this department. And a lot of people started playing The Sims um, during the pandemic. We're still in the pandemic, but during the start of the pandemic, and a lot of people were in the house and they were like, why does The Sims look this way? And we're like, we have been saying the same thing since 2014. They finally got up off their ass and fixed it. Um, let's be proactive instead of reactive. And then related to worlds, like people very frequently discussed how often the worlds were based typically off of European or American cities only. Um, so they started changing that a lot more so in recent packs, like even um, the, like the example sim that they use in the trailers now is like someone of color, that's great or whatever, that's great. Very bare minimum, that's great, but we need to continue that. What does the demographic of your game changes look like? Who do you invite to your events? Who do you invite to play your game early? What creators do you promote? It can't just stop at the... I was gonna say granular at the like that level. Black simmers have made this, have revitalized this game. This game has always been popular, but black simmers specifically have revitalized this game. And the let's plays and the TikTok videos have revitalized this game. Your game changer demographic should reflect the people who have re revitalized your game. It shouldn't be sim creators who we've known existed for over 10 years, um, not getting equal access to things like that. You can't be calling people up to come fix your problems, come fix your skin tones, come fix your hairstyles, and then not continuing that when you're asked, when promoting all your new packs that are coming out. Okay, just a little tidbit, just a little tidbit. So I do think diversity um, potentially could have been a downfall with Sims 4. Um, they started rectifying these issues in the past couple of years. Very least they could do, it's just about seeing what they do in the future. Um, because a lot of companies tried to rectify these issues in the past couple of years and now have completely abandoned that. We'll say if a Sims team completely abandons it, we'll see. We'll never know until we watch and see. So now, what can quote unquote save the Sims 4. I don't think she needs to be saved. Um, and they know why, which is why they teased a new trailer and it was for a fucking crystal kit. This game is like nostalgia for a lot of people and the premise of the game, it's a simulation game, you can do whatever the damn hell you please. That is, there's always gonna be people playing The Sims. There's always gonna be people buying packs that they do not need. There's also always gonna be people buying packs that they know should be less expensive, that they know should be a smaller pack, that they know are glitchy, they buy it for the furniture. But if I had to guess, 
Fix every existing issue first. Do not release packs until they're ready. And while you're waiting to release those packs, let's go back and fix the issues that what made Spa Day be chosen as a pack to get fixed. I'm just, I'm like I'm genuinely curious about that. What made it Spa Day and not Dine Out, which every single simmer has been talking about since the pack came out. It's had these issues since, the, I think it maybe worked properly for a couple of months. Why? Why? So that would be my um, advice to the Sims team. <laughs> That'd be my advice to the Sims team. And that's how I think we can quote unquote save the Sims 4. I don't think it needs to be saved. I don't know how many hours I've logged in. I don't know how many hours you've logged in. You've probably logged in a lot to watch this whole video of me talking about a video game and not even playing it. But I think we can do better. I think we can release packs that work. I think we can have ideas and kind of see, well, this idea, can this idea truly be an expansion pack? Or is this idea kind of limited in how much it can expand the breadth of our game and should we make it a game pack? I think we can get back to honoring the true division between an expansion pack and a game pack. The blurring of the lines has led to some absolute nonsense over the past, I would say three years. We don't have to continue in this era of nonsense. We don't. Because we are currently in the non, I've made eras, I said, Baby Steps era was 2015. The Serious era started in 2016. The area era of uncertainty started in 2020. And the Nonsense era started in 2021. We are still in the Nonsense era, unfortunately. Hopefully we can get back to the series. Because let me tell you a time. It was a time to be a simmer. When Discovery University came out, when island living, can when city living, that was the time to be a simmer. Because you were like, because there's so much you could do. Even the packs that I don't play with, I'm sure people when they got, who want to do the magical shit, Strangerville, Realm of Magic, there was stuff you can do. I bought for rents for the sole purpose of making multi-generational lots. The rest, I don't play. I don't want to be a landlord. Don't want to be one in real life. Don't want to be one in The Sims. That's just me. I don't play with any other part of that pack besides the multi-generational lots and the furniture. It doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be this way. We have so many packs, so many packs about families related to family life. And yet my family still don't feel, of course the video game is not gonna feel real, but still don't feel fulfilled, still don't feel whole. It still feels like, it's, it feels like it's just like, um, like a bag that has a bunch of holes in it. And these packs are tape covering up the holes, but a new hole is gonna form. If you don't address, um, the, if there's an issue, if you don't address the issue or don't address like the core problem, there we have over six packs related to stuff about families, but there's still like, there's still stuff to be done with families, obviously, um, but they still don't feel fully like fleshed out completely. You came out with parenthood, growing together, high school years, all this stuff. And still, I don't, and I play with families mostly, there's still so much to be done. And I'm like, hmm, if we had just like taken a step back, I'm like, hmm, what can we accomplish in this expansion pack right now? And of course you need to save ideas or keep yourself. I'm not saying put all your ideas in one pack. Um, I'm just saying when you ask people to pay $40 for a pack that's supposed to expand how to create a family, like growing together, I would expect it to do so. I wouldn't expect it to just give me objects that don't work, actions that sometimes make things better, sometimes don't. The familial relationships one is a little bit nonsensical. The like jokes are dynamic, that, that stuff is a little bit of nonsense and incredibly random. Um, the likes, dislikes is just okay, but mostly random. Very great ideas, very poor execution very poor execution. And that seems to be the theme of the past 
since 2021 of The Sims. And that's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. It is. So those are my thoughts on the downfall of The Sims 4. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed me talking about The Sims 4. I don't know how long this video was, but I know it was too damn long. Um, but I'm glad you guys enjoyed, or I hope you enjoyed. I don't know if you actually enjoyed or not. You could have hated this video and I would have no idea right now. But thank you guys so much for watching. Um, let me know what you guys think. Let me know when you think like the downfall of The Sims 4 started happening. What pack do you think was the last good pack? Um, and then what do you think The Sims could do, can do from now on? So yeah, let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're staying safe. Um, I would encourage you to put your mask back on if you ever took it off at any point. Um, COVID is very much still here and repeated COVID infections can really do detrimental effects to your immune system. We are currently seeing a measles outbreak in Florida. Um, increase in anti-vaxxers plus a bunch of compromised immune systems due to repeated COVID infections is a recipe for disaster. Um, so I really encourage you to push your mask back on, just keep you yourself and everyone around you safe. Community care is the only way that we can survive in this hellscape that is the United States of America. So thank you very much. I hope you guys had fun. And yes, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.